Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 216 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. And my name is Barbara. How are you? I'm doing well. I might sound a little different because I'm actually recording from a lodge hotel room in the middle of Washington State. Oh. It's pretty beautiful out here. I've already mentioned that. I think I'm going to quit life and just move out here. (laughs) I'm going to follow you because that's one of my favorite places in the whole wide world. And you're in Washington and I am in Dallas, Texas at the Heartland Aesthetic Continuum event, so I am traveling as well, so I hope I don't sound too funky. Yeah, if we sound kind of echoey, don't blame us, blame the hotels. (laughs) Yeah, They're not set up for proper podcast recording, It's, it's not our fault. But our meaningful podcast means so much to us that we're both recording, so cheers to that. Absolutely. It is 7 a.m. here. I don't do anything at 7 (laughs) (laughs) a.m. But I'll tell you, this state is absolutely beautiful. I don't know if anybody even, when you live here, do you recognize that you're surrounded by mountains and trees this much? I mean, or does it just blend into normal day life? It's normal day life. It's kind of like me with the beach. And I think about that and I'm like, you know, it's so beautiful here, but like, I don't go to the beach enough and I really should. So I think it's just one of those things you get used to. But when you travel, it's like amazing. It is super awesome here and the meeting's great too denturist great group lots of good questions i presented on thursday great interaction a lot of good feedback just a good group you know i've never done a denturist show and it's a lot of fun these people are really passionate about what they do yep we all are my friend yeah i guess it just goes with the territory of dentistry what's going on in heartland i know you won the event last year Yeah, it's a brand new event. So it's really a great event. They have mentor doctors and then they have doctors that have never prepped or seated a 10 unit veneer or crown case. And so they walk Mm -hmm. them through every single step and it is just a great learning experience, a great networking experience. And they just learn so much and they put on a top notch event. So today's all lectures. And then after that, they have virtual and then they prep the cases and we do the cases and then we go back and work with them to seat the cases. A lot of photography, a lot of interaction. I just really, it's just a great event. I love it. So they prep a live patient and then you get to take the case back to the lab to do it? No, after this, this is all lectures. And then each, there's events all over the United States and it's in the Heartland operatories at the dentist office in each state. So they bring in five or six doctors, five or six mentors, or five or six patients, and then they go through the whole case with them. Then they send it digitally to us, and we fabricate the veneers, and then we go back for the seating of the cases. So it's a very interactive event. That's awesome, because all you hear about DSOs is pumping out work at cheap prices and seeing how many they could do but you really don't hear about this side of them that's really cool yeah and we get thirty five hundred dollars a case which is a fair amount per unit it's it's super high end i love it that is cool well good for you i hope you win again thank you so don't forget to head over to this episode show notes or voices from the bench.com because we have new triathlon inspired shirts that we're selling to raise money for the foundation of dental laboratory technology We've already sold quite a bit, but in order to raise more money, we need to sell more. So think about it. Podcast logo on the front. I bought four. I know you did. We appreciate (laughs) that. Podcast logo on the front, and on the back has the Race for the Future 8.0 logo, and also some amazing original artwork by Mackenzie Mayer from the Denture Babes. It's got the little swimming implant abutment, the running tooth, the biking denture. It is total dental nerd love it so please head over to the show notes or voices from the bench.com the sale ends on may 28th so please order one today so this week we are back talking to terrific technicians from texas no wait so we are back talking to terrific technician texans from texas <laughs> say that sally sell seashell oh <laughs> Early April, Barb and I were at the DLAT, and we're set up next to the Preet booth all weekend talking to some amazing people. And this week, we got some more. So first up, we finally 
get to talk to someone from Desktop Health. Kevin Dillon comes from a background of manufacturing and actually brought a lot of well-known brands to our industry. In 2015, he joined Envision Tech, which is now Desktop Metal. He talks about the new printer, the new resins, and why Desktop Health is buying labs and going beyond just printing dental stuff. Then we chat with Lance Dwaddle, the president of the Orthodontic Resource Group, or the ORG. Lance has been with and grew a few labs in his history, but now he has a huge ortho lab in Texas and wanted to give back to an industry that has given him so much. Lance talks about the lacks of schools, the proper standard in ortho, but he also talks about how the ORG is hoping to change that and bring ortho labs to a higher standard of professionalism. Which I love. Which is amazing. And then we chat with the amazing Samantha Grayson. Sam is a younger removable technician full of enthusiasm and drive. Sam talks about getting into the industry, working her way from processor to implant tech, and putting her name in for a seat on the DLAT board. Great stuff from the Lone Star State with Kevin Dillon, Lance Dwardle, and Sam Grayson. Whitmix is super excited to announce the new Pro 4K large format 3D printer from Asiga. The open material printer for 385NM and 405NM resins features renowned Asiga reliability and super fast print mode for large batch printing of virtually all print resins. It's ideal for printing any kind of model, dentures, splints, surgical guides, impression trays, and more. As with other Asiga printers, the Pro 4K features the SPS, Smart Positioning System Technology, which ensures that the build platform is in the correct position when forming each layer, providing repeatable accuracy and production continuity. The Asiga Pro 4K DL printer is priced at under 25 grand has a large build plate and is available in both versions. For more information about the Asiga Pro 4K, visit Whitmix.com. We appreciate your support of the podcast, Whitmix. Voices from the Bench The Interview name as she says kevin dillon dillon how do i how do i turn this down oh you want to turn it down yeah. are we too loud for you oh, I, oh yeah this is way turned up how come no one said anything i don't know because the guy in front of me was deaf probably <laughs> <laughs> this thing was crazy it could be i mean my wife tells me i'm deaf but those are that's selective hearing is this a better it volume is selective hearing yeah this is good is awesome better? So Kevin Dillon, Dillon, Kevin Dillon, I already messed you it even, up. You even, he even. Kevin Dillon hell? joins us here at the DLAT 2022 from the Preet booth. Now, no, I'm at the Desktop Health booth. But you're oh. sitting at the oh, Preet booth right now. Nice try. Oh, he's just plugging himself. Oh, that's nice 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 plug in, plug in I'm Elvis. used to it. You're right. not. Plug, plug the borms. Yeah. <laughs> so Desktop Health. We've been trying to get somebody from Desktop Health on the podcast for a while because we want to know what the hay is going on. Because I think everybody wants to know what's going on with desktop health. Except for me, I don't have a clue. You don't. Have <laughs> he but knows Kevin, everything. But He's Kevin Dillon, let's start off. Where do you come into the play? How did you get into this industry? I've been in this industry since 1990. Okay, a long time. I came into the industry. My father started a company called Leach and Dillon, and Leach and Dillon was around until about 2008 when I sold it to. Uh, American Dental Supply. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you were a supply company. We manufactured, Leach and Dillon manufactured alloys, stair press. We brought Bago into the United States. Oh, wow. we, oh no kidding. We launched wow. Cap Tech. Damn. Um, we, you know, we worked uh, with the Tech Showher and, and Aaron Whiteman and Louis Zera with uh, Cap Tech. And yeah. then we split all of that. We sold our alloy division to Argon. Bago went on their own with uh, Bill Aremis and Cap Tech went on their own with Louis Zera. And we stuck with our pressable ceramics, diamond alls, our unique nature, Enigma teeth and that type of wow. uh, boutique type of d- dental laboratory products, both in restorative and in removal. Yeah. So in 2008, I sold my company. And then in 2012, I saw a direction of digital dentistry in our industry. And where I was sitting, I was not in that catbird seat. 
So I literally upended 23 years of my dental experience and started over carrying a bag for a dealer selling Stratasys printers in the industrial sector. Wow. And I left dentistry, and I thought I was done forever. You were selling printers to other industries. I was selling printers to manufacturers. I was out of dental. How oh. come? Because I wanted to learn 3D printing. Okay. My focus was on digital. And so I thought I was out. I was, in, I was out of dental for three years learning the 3D printing side of things. And then Envision Tech found me on LinkedIn and brought me over. And so I came over to Envision Tech in 2015. So okay, yep. I've been with Envision Tech, and Al Sablani hired me in 2015, and I came over with the transition of desktop health. Okay. Yep. Didn't we talk to him? Yeah, we talked to Al. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Okay. That was before the desktop health mer- merger purchase. I don't know what it is. Desktop metal purchased Envision Tech on January 15th of 2021. Yep. On March 15th of 2021, desktop health was created. So we're literally just over a year old right now. So desktop metal was all about metal manufacturing. And with the purchase of Envision Tech, they became like a health group or is that am i correct so i am trying to sound smart but that was good rick fall up the ceo of desktop metal and al sablani had known each other for many years sure they decided that they were going to come together and rick fall up bought envision tech because of its nature it's 170 ips that we have what does that mean ip in intellectual properties okay yeah yeah okay um as as well as the unique profile of oxygen technology on the envision one and the resins that we develop you have a patent on oxygen we have a patent on continuous (laughs) printing so in 2010 Al and Envision Tech. We filed in 2006, and we were granted the patent for continuous printing in 2010. Sweet. But aren't all printers continuous printing? No, continuous printing is defined by not having the platform not touch the bottom, not finding the home position. So continuous uh. printing, uh, the way we work it is we incorporate oxygen underneath the resin. Hmm. Photopolymers will not cure in the presence of pure oxygen. So instead of the platform coming down to the material tray, squeezing yep. the material at 100 microns, curing that layer, and then peeling away, and then coming down, squeezing, peeling, yeah, squeezing, I get peeling. You. We pre- create an inhib- inhibition layer, which it basically grows continuously off the air cushion. So it's very much wow, like the best, wow. the best analogy is an air hockey table. So if yep. you have an air hockey mm-hmm. table, your air hockey table is the material tray. I think Al used this analogy, yeah. And his STL file is the air hockey puck. So it's yep. barely sitting above. Now, having it sit up, sit in that, you know, print off the oxygen bed reduces separation forces, increased speed, and a lot of benefits that we uh, aid in the printing. So that's what the Envision 1 was centered around where we launched in 2019. Yeah. Okay. In 2021, we were bought by Desktop Metal. We were created Desktop Health. And Desktop Health, it's a healthcare-focused company mm-hmm. on 3D printing. So right now, Death Envision Tech Dental is the pillar of desktop health. Okay. Yep. Okay. We also have a printer called Bioplotter. The Bioplotter is a product that prints in, in hydrogels and allows you to support your own uh, stem cell regeneration. So, for example, I You're can, printing stem cells? We're printing. We're, we're developing <laughs> the growth of stem cells within a 3D printed part out of hydrogels. Holy, that's Holy. remarkable. An example would be is if I could take a scan of my knee meniscus, put it into a CAD file, print it out a scaffolding of a hydrogel and incorporate the, the DNA from the, from the meniscus and grow that meniscus and put your own meniscus back, back into your in. body, back into your... And that's what Jeez. we've done. Now, that printer... <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. I'm even into that. That's cool. I got it. That's cool. So wow. that printer has been around for 10 years. It is the most research printer in the industry. We have 1,600 papers. And we haven't had the ability to commercialize that until now. So now that we're a publicly traded company and known by Desktop Metal, we've commercialized that in the ear, nose, and throat sector. There's a company called uh-huh. Beacon Bio that uses our bioplotter technology to develop the regeneration of the tympatic membrane. They basically can regrow your eardrum from your own DNA. Shut and that up. has been commercialized. Let me... Let- how much is a printer like that? Are Anywhere, we talking hundreds of thousands of dollars? It's over $100,000. Yeah, yeah, I would imagine. That's yeah. intense. So that printer has been sitting in research for 10 years, and so now that we've, where Desktop Metal has the ability to commercialize it. Yep. Watch out. Yeah. So, and, I, and I think that having the, the portfolio that Desktop Metal has, we can print metal, we can print titanium, we can print 
Peak. We have a carbon fiber printer that prints Peak. We're printing a new type of polymer now in our flex air material and DLP. One of the things that people don't realize is that we've had a research and development facility for resins in Montreal for over 20 years. We're known, Envision Tech was known as a printer-based company. Yeah. But we've been researching, developing, and manufacturing resins for 20 years. And so we're literally one of the very few companies that are doing our own development on resins for, for a future development and our development on, on printers. Interesting. This printer that we just launched with the Einstein, yeah. what we've done is simplified the engineering. This printer was literally a thought, an idea in August that Desktop Health and its management team was able to make a reality and launch before Chicago in that short a time. It's a new engineering. It's not an Envision one with the oxygen taken out. This literally has been built from the ground up for simplicity, for accuracy, and for speed. And it's the first commercialized wow. printer that has a heated build envelope to maintain the variables that we experience in printing. Define that for me. Resin temperature. Okay. Resin temperature, if I'm printing in Minnesota in January, the room's going to be colder than it is in Miami in Florida, you know, in July. So you no have different kidding. environments. <laughs> I'm from Florida. Okay. <laughs> so you have different environments, and those environments have different variables, and we want to eliminate the variables so we have the most predictable outcome. And incorporating a heated environment is one of those things that allow us to control the variable within the printer. So you control printer. the temperature cool. inside the printer. Correct. What about, like, humidity and stuff? You well, it's all done that with the, it's done with the heated environment. Nice. Interesting. I didn't realize that played such a part into printing was, you know, temperature of the room. We're creating performing plastics. And up until now, we've been printing in acrylics. Yeah. You know, we've been taking basic 3D printing acrylics and making a denture out of them. We're making a, a sure. night guard yeah. out of them, a yep. surgical yep. guide, a, yep. a model. And that chemistry is all the base chemistry of basic acrylics. And what we've done with Flexera is change that base backbone chemistry creating a longer chain polymer and address the two main issues that exist in 3D printed materials. And that is brittleness and the absorption of water. Hmm. You put plastic in the mouth and it absorbs water, what happens? It becomes a catastrophic failure, right? Yeah. This is yeah. a problem, so we need to control that. Flexera, because of its interlocking network of molecules, is resistance to absorption of moisture by half. As a matter of fact, we have an administrator in our office that had a all-on-six case done in June of 2020. She had her zirconia final done by Ryan Dunlop out there in the FAM Institute yep, yep. in August of 21. So she had 15 months with Flexera, all on six, provisional in her mouth. Mm. She smokes every day. She <laughs> drinks coffee every day. And Dr. Ryan Dunlop did not show any sign of staining. So there wasn't anything getting wow. Because it wasn't absorbing yeah, the moisture. And sense. it's a unique material, Sweet. physical property material. Smoking and coffee, huh? <laughs> and no stains. That's remarkable. Yeah, and there's Seriously. many stories like this from our users like Jack Morano and Jessica Burrell and all oh, these yeah. people that yep. have used Flexera, and it's been in the mouth for months. And one of the things that the doctor notices is that there's no growth of bacteria. That's key. It's huge. It's huge, huge yeah. So the difference in Vision Tech and Desktop Health is that in Vision Tech, I spoke about the, the highly accurate and uh, engineered printers. Mm -hmm. With Desktop Health, I'm talking about an end solution, a material, an application. And I'm not talking about nuts and bolts of a piece of equipment. Yeah. But what does a full system look like and how does it benefit your practice, your lab, yep. your, the application you're trying to fill? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So how did you hear about him, well, Elvis? Because you were the one that said. Yeah, so the big news is you guys bought out some labs. We did, yes. So a company that manufactures printers. And materials. And materials is buying dental labs. Why? Yeah, it's a unique. It's interesting. A lot of people are questioning what's going on. So you know, He says that because he's famous and I'm he's not, a pain in the ass. He knows they're everybody. Questioning you, they're questioning you. They're not questioning us. They're exactly. pretty questioning Exactly. <laughs> so do tell. Just, just tease. It's interesting because, you know, I, I had a long conversation with Rick Fulop. Rick Fulop is the CEO of Desktop Metal. Okay. Okay. And his vision of what a dental laboratory is is a lot different than you and I. You and I, we've been in the industry our entire life. Sure. And the old saying, you can't see the forest for the trees, is a lot like where we are. Right? Yep. But imagine if you're looking from the outside as this investor ahead of a 3D printing global company. With zero dental background. Bandu. With zero dental background. Yep. His, his yep. background is, is basically whatever Al had told him during the years and, and his understanding of what the market looks like and the growth of this market. <laughs> but he looks at a dental laboratory as a medical device manufacturer. Okay. And, you know, he goes, it's a very interesting way to look at a laboratory because what is a laboratory doing? 
It's creating a human body replacement, a customized and personalized prosthetic for a patient within hours. Hmm. Within hours. Yeah. Within hours. If you go to outside all the medical device world, right, it takes weeks to months to create a personalized medical device for that patient. Yeah. So what if we were able to advance 3D printing and advance digital dentistry and advance digital manufacturing under desktop health that governs all of medical health? And we yeah. took a laboratory that is now saying, hey, what if we showed you a workflow to be able to do the eardrum and be able to service ah. somebody. And you, now you have a dental laboratory that's opening up markets outside of dental because they're adopting the 3D printing protocols that we're putting in place. Opportunity. How do we put that in place? Wow. So you're taking mm. a dental lab and making it a medical lab. No, I, I said this was an idea. I said, uh, this is the concept. I mean, this is what Rick Volop is saying. He says, what if we sped up the medical device of, a, of an arm, a hand, yeah. a limb, a, a liver, a knee meniscus, an eardrum, and we put this under one house, whether it's teeth or whatever, under that laboratory, and we were able, how do we know to move that through? How does that digital workflow look, and who's going to perfect it? I think it's a compliment to how laboratories do business with the way that he's thinking and his vision. Absolutely. He's astonished at the way we operate. It really is amazing. And we don't see it because we're inside it, but we truly are a unique profession and a unique trade that is different from the rest of the world. And we do things that nobody else can do. That's cool. And so when you take a look at owning doll for example he's saying well how would i know to do this unless i know unless i own it and then i can utilize that facility and and take a look at it from a zirconia perspective for example right back in 2000 when zirconia started to come in and mill started to become uh, that material was white opaque it was hard to cut it was ugly and now you fast forward 15 years to today look at it you've got massive awesome translucency 12 mega 1250 megapal strength five layer pucks right we're milling everything thing and it's looking great it took 15 years to develop those materials and we're saying what if we cut that in half yeah we want to increase the adoption of 3d printing in our space and we need to do that by understanding what that happens yep if i'm bringing out a brand new type of material and it comes out what usually happens in our industry right you have a german technician that says hey das is good you can now market (laughs) it and you put into a commercial laboratory and the thing goes and we go oops sorry it doesn't work here i'm a hundred man laboratory you can't do this here takes too long Yep. So the idea is now that you've acquired like DAL, you now have that capability to run these products through a large operation to see if they work. Correct. So as we develop a, a super strong appliance for sleep, right, we'll run it through that. And what does that look like from the time that it comes from the doctor to all the way to the final prosthetic? And how do we put that through? I mean, I have, I'm having questions every single day from laboratories, especially Crown and Bridge laboratories that want to adopt 3D printing dentures. Yeah. Right. Like, what software do I use? What records do I get from the doctor? What's important on that end? Blah, 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 blah. And so we said, what if we provided that education, that workflow in Dahl and say, come on in? What if you had a key to Glidewell's office door and was able to talk to him about business, right? That's who Louis Zara is. That's who Louis Zara is in in Dahl, Dahl, at Desktop Labs. What if you had the ability to say, okay, well, I don't know how to do this. Well, come on in. We'll show you so you can advance 3D printing in your practice. And we speed up the adoption of this by growing it. We have commercial testing. We bring in new products. We have education. One of the things that you'll see on our website is that we've focused on Desktop University, bringing in Dr. Wally Rene as our VP of Clinical Strategy and, and Jessica Burrell and all these guys to support the products and make sure that when it comes to your laboratory, this thing is it's exactly as expected. We need to meet the expectations of our industry. Mm-hmm. And we need to do this by providing education and peer-to-peer and let everybody know what's going on. So you're going to welcome other labs into your facilities. 100%. And get them on board with the workflow and teach them everything. Smart. And it's, it's like going to be center. real teaching because you guys do it every day. Right. That's, that's huge. That's, that's the concept. That makes right. a lot of sense. Yeah. So right now we're incorporating all of the, the digital side. I mean, it, it's still a laboratory. It's running like it's running, and it's not changed the way it's running. We're yeah. not 
We're not going after laboratories. We're not changing the way that business is run. That run, business is run the way it's been run for as many years as it's oh, been it's, run. Yes. All we want to do is start early adoption into into speeding Other up the areas. practice of 3D yeah. printing. We want to use it as a platform for R&D. We want to use it for how do we grow the laboratory industry and other aspects outside of dental that could make sense. We can use it for business purposes. How do we walk these guys through? What machines do you have? How much yeah. business do you need? What is the ROI on things like this? Bring your technician in. We'll take you from soup to nuts, from records to a final denture. Wow. Wow. That's the concept of bringing on these laboratories. So it, it's, it's meant to speed up the, the laboratory and grow the laboratories around. It. Nice. I think it's a great concept. You personally, start getting into other body parts. I mean, well, well, the the Beacon Bio <laughs> is <laughs> the Beacon Bio is, <laughs> is is the first That's step into that. And that is. The eardrum that I oh, used earlier. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's what I was But I don't, about, I don't know how that's going to look in the dental life. So that whole. How do, you get, how do you get a scan of somebody's eardrum? It's got to be a really it's gotta be tiny little yeah. intraoral scanner. <laughs> a Q-tip with CBCT? a camera? I don't know. Yeah, that's nuts. Couldn't you do like but, a uh, C scan or so a CT yeah. scan of the brain CBCT, and then go all the way maybe? in there and know. check it out? That's some fascinating stuff. But it's, in, it's part of the vision that eventually labs will start adopting into more I could see I, it. I could see it. It fits I mean, together yeah. really well. Yeah. It, Dentures has grown where it has because we've got all the supporting technologies around it. Yeah. You know, ExoCAD in three shapes. They've built up their denture modules. Yeah, we've yeah, got yeah. better scanners. We've got better, yeah. you know, all of these things. People are working in PIC for their implants. There's yep. all of the new technology is coming in and making things easier. I mean, we've been 3D printing dentures for three or four years. Yeah. But out of basic acrylic plastic and nobody's, everybody's saying that. We can't do final dentures with it. Mm. Well, not with that material, you can't. Yeah, that's so. It's 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 that it's that zirconia path all over again, and it's and as we don't want to see it take fifteen years, we want to see it take five. Wow, that's exciting. I think it's really neat. I think it's a great idea that labs have the ability to do other products. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just Agreed. diversifying yourself. And if you're designing teeth on a three shape, why not an eardrum? We could all learn it. I mean, why not? <laughs> Just got to buy the bioplotter. Oh, well, of course. You know, a couple hundred. hundred special grand. hydro yeah. gels and yeah, get whatever. involved in DNA splitting. And <laughs> oh, yeah. I DNA split all the time. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's usually on Thursdays yeah, that I do my Lord. DNA splitting. But it's very interesting to see the focus of desktop health versus Envision Tech. And it's the first time in the seven years I've been with Envision Tech where when I was at Chicago and, and actually uh, earlier today here at this meeting, People are coming up to me and asking me about the flex arrow. They're yeah. asking me about the solution. That's the They're material. not asking me about yep. the piece of equipment. Right? Yeah. Right? The piece of equipment is a light source, which has to be performing. It has to be fast. It has to be accurate. It has to be easy to use. It can't break down all those things that we re-engineered sure. into. Sure, yeah. But the real hero is the appliance, is the yeah. material. And so Desktop Metal as a corporation, as a publicly traded corporation, is putting in 31% into R&D. That's double what most companies do. And so we're, it, we're looking at 30% R&D. We're looking at growing more and more applications in dentistry. Our future is in the application side. We can do the printer side. And we were, the, I mean, we've been printing 3D in the lab space since 2007. Yeah. And in industrial, we have industrial grade printers. So for us to come in with an industrial grade printer that can go into the clinical space at nine grand and satisfy the laboratory at nine grand, then we're printing Flexera with a reasonable light source that makes sense. And now you're looking at modulizing and creating a workflow that surrounds the application and not the application surrounding the printer. That makes sense. You know? So imagine it's a porcelain furnace, right? When you're just doing PFMs, you have one porcelain furnace, you put your opaque in there, you put your yep. bispake, and then you stain. And can you imagine a large laboratory with one porcelain furnace, and you have your opaque in Hell there, no. and then you got to line up with guys in queue with their tongs and We'd their bispake, and says, up. oh, let me wait. And then <laughs> yeah. it doesn't work that way, does it? No. So if you have, you've got your, your Ceramco PFMs, I've got these porcelain furnaces, i got opaque porcelain yep, furnaces, yep, i got yep. stained porcelain furnaces, my high end gets a dekema. Your yep. porcelain furnaces are designed based on your workflow. The purchases are. The, the printer is going to be done the same way. When you're looking at a high-performing printer, brand new development for nine grand for the purposes of printing Flexera, the Ultra Plus for permanent crowns, now you're putting printers in places that make sense according to workflow. At nine grand, is not much more expensive than it's really not. Furnace. Is that no. what the new Einsteins are? Yeah. Wow. That's not a lot of I hear all. a lot of people are excited about the Einstein. Why was it called Einstein? 
because brainchild. It's, uh, it's, yeah. Duh. I don't know. Obviously. It's a genius. Exactly. Awesome. To come up with something so I powerful and yeah. so that's, smart at such a low price. Yeah, that's true. Huh. I love it. It's good stuff. Well, good. Well, I'm glad I was able to uh, take a few minutes. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. How's the meeting going for you so far? Great. It's my first time here, and I like the way this meeting's set up. I'm definitely coming back to the DLAT next year. Yeah, I mean, this is our second meeting that we've been actually physically here, yeah. and it's a really strong meeting. A lot Very of great strong. people. I love the fact that they close everything down. Everybody's in here all afternoon, and it's yeah. just a... Plus, we like actually being physically face-to-face with people. So thank you for stopping by. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it, sir. Have a good meeting. All right. Take care. Bye. We're here recording the DLAT 2022 meeting at the Preet booth. But in conjunction with the DLAT, we have the ORG Ortho. Orthodontic Resource Group. Okay. Orthodontic Research Group. Resource. 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 And you're Lance. What's your last name? Dowdle. 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 (laughs) Yep. Get used to it, okay? I've, Lance I've Dowdle. He does it. struggle a little I've bit. I've been used to it my whole life. He's so, Lance, what? <laughs> how'd you get into the ortho business? I babysat for an orthodontist. <gasps> Are you serious? And I've been doing it over 40 years. Wow. So I, I started when I was 15. 15? I, I babysat for him when I was 13, and he hired me when I was 15. Like you babysat his kids? Yep. Interesting. So, and he took me to an Eagle Scout banquet. I was 15, hired me that night. And the very next day, I showed up, and I made a complicated appliance, and he... You had no idea what you were doing? Not a bit. And the opportunity presented itself, and I ran with it. And Did so you love it? I have loved it. It's been a great industry for me, a great, great career, and that is part of the reason why I'm part of the ORG, and because uh, I want to make sure, in the end, we leave the industry better then uh, I came into it. Got to give back what it's given you. Yeah. Uh, 100%. So yeah. you, you worked for one orthodontist. You're not doing that now, just no. one orthodontist. No. So you've opened up a whole lab? Or? So I then uh, went up to Canada and worked in a commercial laboratory, and I helped their laboratory to grow. I hear ortho in Canada is even bigger. Um, I no? Don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it was it was up. great for me. Yeah. <laughs> How did you end up in Canada? Just make, I uh, went there on a mission for my church, and oh. then I got hired by a lab there. Wow. Nice. Then uh, we had a falling out in the commercial laboratory. I went to work for another in-house lab, and I grew his laboratory from zero to a, a decent size amount. Yeah. And I thought, well, if I can do this for somebody else twice, do it for myself. I'm going to go do this for myself. And I moved back to the United States with my wife. I married up in Canada, and we moved to Oregon with just a couple Oregon. thousand dollars in our bank account, and we've now, I'm getting, my kids are now involved, and nice. we, have, we have over 40 technicians. 40? Wow. Yeah. So, wow. Unbelievable. So, what's the name of your uh, It's ortho? Excel Orthodontics. Nice. So, and that's what you do, and that's what you specialize that's in, it. is ortho? Just ortho. All day, every day, and all it's day, that day. big? That's it. Wow. So, that's impressive. I'm lame when it comes to ortho, I'll be honest. Holly well, retainers. We, we are the ugly only stepchild when it comes of the to industry. Ortho, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm proud to say it. We're yeah. the ugly stepchild. <laughs> Why? Nobody. Ortho? Up until this, the ORG and the AOLP, there was we, never we really were, a, we didn't, there was you had never no associations or anything? Never. So we'd have to come to a convention like this and learn dentures. Yeah, you get, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And now you have your own. We finally. If we're I'm only look- 100 years behind everybody else. Yeah, we're- but you're here. <laughs> I'm looking around. I'm like, what do the yellow lanyards mean? I've got blue. What the hell are that's the yellow? The, and the then O-R-G. they said it's the yep. ORG. And 100%. I was like, all right. So you can see how, w- how many of us I know, there. and they're up bit. here, and so. we're down there, and it's kind of a mixed meeting. It's and pretty you know, impressive. here's the interesting part. It's a collaborative effort. Yeah. It's not any one of us that deserves any of the credit. But as a group, we've accomplished great things. So. Do you guys have like a board or is it? We do. Okay. And we're in the rotation like many of the other associations. Sure. And so I was the president this year and I'm stepping down and there'll be a new one for 2022, 23. Nice. And so when does uh, your step down wrap up? Is this the meeting this and then is it kind changes of the over? This is kind of the culmination. And yep. then, yeah. Then, uh, 
But will, will I still be involved? I hope so. Yeah. I hope they, I I hope they let me back. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's see, let's see how the show goes first. <laughs> this is your meeting, right? <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So we'll see if they give me good reviews or not. So years ago, we had Chris on, who That's started right. the AO, AOLP. AOLP. Yeah. And that has become the ORG. That's, so that's right. What happened? Well, we, we uh, it was just more or less a rebranding. Sure. And so, really, it's it's a continuation of what Chris started. Yeah. And so, Chris deserves a lot of credit. Yeah, he even had a lot of passion. Yeah. Even before that, it was uh, Priscilla, and and yep. Cade. So yep. Cade, oh, yeah. we had Cade and Priscilla that yep. brought in Chris. Yep. Which then has culminated to where we are today. And so, we wouldn't be here today without them. Sure. So. They deserve credit Absolutely, uh, as do. much as anybody or more. And, and it's just gotten bigger and even just maybe a little bit more defined where we're, our focus right now is to really developing the reason for the name change is we're trying to create fabrication standards for our appliances on the website. So if you go into the ORG website, you'll see fabrication standards on what it takes to manufacture many of our appliances. But we need, we're, we're working to develop that. Is there uh, a need for it? Are there, there people is, out there doing stuff they shouldn't be doing? Well, or? even the doctors, uh, there oh, yeah. isn't standardization. So yeah. I'm not saying that we won't be able to uh, customize or give doctors preferences, but we're all starting from the same base. Interesting. And uh, and so there, there are resources also for compliance issues with FDA and with OSHA standards. And then even more than that, it will be even how to do certain things like how to... 3D design appliances and so on. So there'll be how-to videos as well. Yeah. As, so those are all the things that are on there. And so it's a resource for the doctors as well. Sure. So the, hence the name Orthodontic Resource Group because yep, we exactly. want the doctors to use our site as, as a part, resource. As a resource. Yeah. Interesting. So we didn't just change it because it... Sounded better. Sounded better. It, it had a different Is your focus. website org.org? Orthodontic. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, we tried to do that, but they wouldn't let us have that. <laughs> But we're uh, orthodonticresource.com. Nice. So nice. They, they, we, they wouldn't let us have ORG. At a, yeah, I'm sure somebody's need, got it. We didn't need to have ORG and ORG. <laughs> orgasm <laughs> dot orgasm. <laughs> Been said. Yeah, I bet it has. So By the people that think like so me. So I know just like our side of the industry, digital is growing huge. I'm sure it's Ash, happening in ortho. 100%. Yeah. So part of our... This meeting, we, we've talked about laser sintering bands. So wow. laser sintering metal is a big part. In the industry, we now have robots that bend our wire. I saw not. one of those in Chicago a couple um, years ago. So we have that machine. I think and nuts. there's a couple people that are here with the same machine as well. Mm-hmm. And so in order to compete in today's marketplace, technology is how we do it. Yeah. Um, with all of the issues that we run into with labor shortages If we don't get involved with technology, you know, we're pricing ourselves out of a marketplace, you know, and it's sad to me to some degree because, you know, you can start, you used to be able to start a lab for a few thousand dollars. And and now if you don't have a quarter of a million, it really makes it difficult. Same thing. So I, I, I worry about the next generation. And so I'm fortunate to have got in when it, you didn't have to spend any money. (laughs) It's changed. And, you know, it's sad to me that the Bureau of Labor and Industry still considers dental labs as unskilled labor. Yeah. I mean, how I know pathetic that is that? Me off. Yeah. I, I'm like, okay, so, haul your sorry butt over here yeah, and show me how you bend this appliance. Yeah. Oh, look, you can't do it. You suck. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Where's your skill, buddy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you don't have any. You're yeah. the unskilled labor we're talking is about. Is there any schools <laughs> teaching ortho? Um, well, <laughs> it's, it's actually they, they teach it in the dental lab part. And the, you, we get two weeks. You guys get the rest of the two years. I was we say, get it's two, really, yeah, maybe three really for real, yeah, for a real pressure. You know, yeah. for a real progressive school. Why do you think that is? Remember when I said we were the ugly stepchild? Yeah, yeah. That, that's part of the reason why. Huh. Um, and 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 part of it is is we have hundreds and hundreds of appliances, and we have no standards. Once again, let's go back to the standards. And so when I take my CDT, uh, the person who graded me on my CDT uh, many many years ago. I asked them if they'd ever put in an, a, an, a, an appliance that was used in a patient's mouth, and they said no. Hmm. And yet they were going to grade me on... So the person on, grading you had never... Had never, get, never put it in a mouth. So no you're bird. sitting there going, okay, there's, there's a problem here. Yeah. So, and, and I looked at him and I said, you know, if I don't really get a good grade on this when I've done thousands of them, I'll be really, really pissed. Yeah. 
Are you guys looking to have your own certification? That. Is that uh, part of the plan? I don't think we've really addressed that. Not a concern right now, but but at the same time, as you know, states like Texas and Washington and regulatory issues bring out come up, it, it could be sure. because I I just took the comprehensive exam for ortho, mm-hmm. and I would say probably fifty percent of the questions were irrelevant, outdated, and n- not even remotely accurate yeah. i mean i passed it but only because i knew what they were after but it was a pathetic test yeah someone so, just coming into the industry would probably struggle quite a bit yeah because it was so outdated it probably was from the 40s and 50s i mean the question what were test asked. was this the comprehensive for ortho for cdt for cdt, for CDT. it was yeah. pathetic Wow. And, you know, and if anybody in the NADL or NBC is listening to this. I'm on the board. Um, <laughs> tell, tell them that was the worst experience. And I just took it less than just a few months ago. Really? Because Washington requires it. And I'm like, great. i got to go back and get my wow. CDT again. Pathetic. Hmm. Sorry. Something to take back. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, no, seriously. I, I would say probably at least 50%, if not more, were irrelevant in today's ortho tests. I'm going to bring you aboard. Yeah, I was going to say, do we saying. have anybody on the NBC that is ortho? I don't believe so. <laughs> Isn't Cade on the NBC? But I'll check it out. Cade was in the NADL. Cade's awesome. Yeah, no, So Kate's let's give movie. Cade uh, oh, no, <laughs> a all round all of applause, by by 100%. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I think he's on the NAD. Or he's, the N- he's in the NBC. DLAT, and I think he was with the NBC. Yeah, so he's I, I'm ortho. not sure, though. Yeah. I don't know. He's just involved he more. He wasn't at the last meeting, I can tell you that. Yeah. But in my Maybe he, mind. I don't know. Well, we, okay. Let's not speculate. But, yeah, this is good information. I mean, I don't know anything well, about I'm, ortho. Well, I'm so. getting ready to retire. What? Or at least my son wants me to. I was going to say, dude, you don't look <laughs> that old. Does your son work in the lab, obviously? He does. Yeah, and, there you and Let go. me rephrase that. So he wants me out. He wants me to retire. Of course so, he does. Um, and he's very talented, and uh, I'm not, I don't know. Do you want to retire? <laughs> you don't look old enough, man. Um, look he's around on the, the fence, I can tell, folks. Look around this room. He's like, You don't look no, nearly half the age I of half. I'm ready still to working. retire. I, I feel fortunate my life has been blessed. Mm-hmm. But uh, I need to slow down, I can tell you that one. So, I, you got, I, is I, ortho busy right now? I don't know. Ortho's right. nuts. Is right it? No. Does it ever slow down or is it just constant? No, it's constant. Yeah. So. With the doctor-assisted ortho where they can do all of theirs, like how has that impacted your business? So it's in-house laboratories have always impacted our industry. It's not new. It's not going away. I'm not living in fantasy land that says I want to yeah. close that up. But in our industry in general, the the orthodontist is or the the clinician is exempt from almost all FDA requirements. Yeah, same thing with dentists. It's the same. Yep. If they make crap, they can put it in the patient's mouth. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And and they say that oh, it's fantastic. I made it. Well, you suck. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And and yet we have to jump through all these hoops, meet all these criteria, and we put out this beautiful appliance, and we can't really sell it to you because we don't have an FDA stamp of approval. And so the FDA really needs to get up current. Ultimately, they're punishing the patient. Oh, yeah. And they're not being fair to the patient by giving in to the political action committee or whatever that doesn't require the clinician to meet the same standard. Sure. It's, it's like a pharmacy being able to say, well, I mix my own drugs. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. would never think that that was never. okay, but why is that okay for a dentist? That's a good he point. gets to mix his own pharmacy. Yeah. pharmaceutical drugs and That's he gets so to implement true. them and you don't even have to have a test you know sign bring me you know we talk all this vaccination we get to just shoot you up anytime we want <laughs> true <laughs> you know and you open wide say oh i'm gonna put something in your mouth that you have no idea that's nuts it's kind of scary you know fda i hope you're listening because that's what you're doing yeah yeah. So. What about clear aligners? Did that impact your guys? Oh, it always that's impacts. That's when I started. The, oh, I was going to start at, with the clear aligners, so yeah. Clear aligners has affected our laboratory yeah. a great deal. And, Do uh, you fabricate them now? So that's one of these 510K clearance yeah, things. Yeah. Uh, Once again, the, the doctor doesn't have to have any FDA clearance. Yeah, they buy a printer. They can do whatever they that's want. That's right. Because they say, well, we're the ones straightening the teeth. Well, there's limitations to what the aligners can do, but they don't have to meet any criteria. So if a laboratory wants to do clear aligners in order to be FDA compliant, they either need to have a contract manufacturing yep. with a, somebody who has a 510K or they need to go out and spend the money and get their yeah, own. Yeah. And right now, I think that's something I wish the laboratories would pay attention to. Mm. 
and either not put themselves at risk with mm-hmm. the FDA. It's, it's really ir- irresponsible for our industry just because we don't like the, what they're doing. We really shouldn't try and circumvent them either. Yeah. We, we then become just as bad as what, yeah. you know, the very thing I just complained about. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be that guy. Yeah, I agree. So, you know, that's why we come to these conventions is where we can say, hey, dude, stop it or, you know. Uh, or, Snap out of it, Elvis. So, that's it. So... <laughs> So after your this year, so you'll stay involved, but they don't have a um, I'm another not going seat anywhere. for you, right? So you you term out after president, or do they have a past chair or a past? I'll still be involved. I just don't know to what level. It's yeah. still a, an infancy, and, and maybe maybe it is with the NBC because that was on my to do list. So uh, I don't mind consulting there a little bit, but and I think I can get a few other people to be on board because, you know, Washington State has now required it. It's new in 2022 that Washington State requires you to have uh, your... Uh, ortho CDT? Yep. Yeah. So, huh. Or CDT in general. It's not just ortho. So. so you could have an ortho lab but have a denture CDT? Just have to have a CDT. You just have to have... Once again, where's the logic in that? Yeah. There is It makes none. no sense. Yeah. I mean, I'm a ceramist, I'm, you know, but, uh, but now you I, can you're do, an implant lab. <laughs> yeah, and you can do ortho just because you have that CDT behind yeah. you. I mean, yeah, you, you, can you know, out. a heart surgeon and obstetrician, they're, you yes. know, they're one and the same, aren't they? Yeah, so you, it's a doctor. A doctor's a doctor, right? <laughs> <laughs> Open heart surgery. I don't think <laughs> so. When you really start thinking about it, that's some scary stuff. And, and, and we're the same. It makes no sense. You know, follow the logic, and that's really where we need to be. So Yeah. Well, hopefully ORG will uh, make some changes, man. Well, it's been phenomenal. I, I give a lot of credit to the crew, that uh, the, the, the team that has been uh, put together. Yeah. And, you know, it's fascinating. When one person, the beautiful part about an organization, and, and if you put together the right team, when one person doesn't quite function the way they're supposed to or, or they have a problem and the other people step up, they it really says a lot for the organization yeah, and that's exactly what happened during covid and personal trials and struggles and so the org has been uh, an example of that but we're, we need to reach out to more i mean by no means are we finished so yeah you should never be finished just I keep agree. moving it forward I agree. and proving so. it and so well congratulations on your presidency thank you for all you do for the industry and yeah lance that's hit key. me up i would love to have you come over and, and well i uh i you know NBC. you think i would bring a business card but they're i kinda, don't have one either <laughs> they're kind of outdated they're dental technicians damn it i always forget my stupid card i don't even think i have one anymore to be honest with you i i'm gonna go with you the exact same way i don't even know that i have one i'm serious but when Elvis emails you this and you get to listen to it, hit me back and you'll have my email. That'll be great. And yeah. I'll introduce I, you to If we can get some voices from the bench on the NBC and, and rewrite that test, I'm not a great writer, but I can They're tell all you about it right I now. can tell you that it needs to be reworked. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, okay. Exactly. Well, I appreciate the feedback, and I'll pass it on. We can get that out to the ORG for approval. Yeah, so that's really cool. That would be cool. fantastic. So. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Lance. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Hear us okay? Yeah. All right. Here we go. DLAT 2022 at the Preet booth. We have the pleasure of speaking with Samuel. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Samantha. Grayson. Grayson. I knew that. I did. I did. I totally knew He's that. He's like but four I for four today. Everyone's got easy names. I know. I love God. this state. I love this state. <laughs> and I don't have to make fun of him, so there you'll, you have it. You'll have other reasons. I will. So, do you go by Sam? Yeah, Sam, Sam is what I prefer. Sam Grayson. How are you? I'm great. First time at the show? Uh, no, sec- wait. You came last time. Uh, yeah, yeah, I how did. How do you remember? We've communicated before. Good. So how are you liking it? It's great. I like uh, getting to meet all the people that yep. I've, you know, been in contact with and seeing local people as well. Just talking is to other technicians is interesting. It's half the fun. Yeah, yeah. it's really fun. Yeah. I and mean, to the see courses, all the products, The too. courses are nice. The course is really nice. Yeah. yeah. But it's the meeting the people, talking oh, to yeah. the people. So tell us your story. How did you get into the industry? By chance, um, yeah. I applied for a clinic for front desk and they had a lab position open and I tried it out and I had 90 days to get it down and I was a good candidate because I was creative with my hands and it just 
so started what'd you from do? there. So like, I was I started you? as a processor, so pouring models, okay. doing relines, repairs, processing dentures, and I just fell in love with it. And it, that's where it all started, and it never stopped. And there's never a boring day, right? No, no. It's like blood, sweat, and tears yeah. in the, <laughs> being Different a processor. Yeah. You know, no, no lunch sometimes. Oh, and yeah. Just ready to walk out the door a lot of the times. <laughs> but I was just so thirsty for more knowledge, and I wanted to know how to set teeth, how to wax. I wanted to know more about implants and just everything involved wow. in the lab. Yep. So do you like to wax? I do. Do you like the feel of the wax? I do like to wax. Yeah. Actually, that's therapeutic mm-hmm. for me to just be able to yep. take my time on a case to make it look really nice. Yeah. We um, were just talking to somebody, I think, the other last weekend that we talked about uh, the young oh, lady from Finland. The Finland, How therapeutic yeah. it was for her to wax and how she fell in love with it as well. It so, is. Yeah. I used to color and draw a lot and paint. Yep. So it's like that. It's, you know, it's nice feeling. This in-office lab was only removable? Yes, it was. Um, We did same-day dentures. Oh. And then I left that place and went to an implant center. And that's where I got a lot of the hybrid experience. And that was really fun because I was kind of just thrown into it. And I had only, like, started training to set teeth. And so they just said, oh, no, you got it. You do it. So you were still learning to set teeth, and now you're <laughs> setting teeth for hybrids and stuff? Yeah. Yowza. That's yeah. kind of how it rolls in our industry. <laughs> if you've got talent, you're in. Yeah. The, the, you know 10% of this? Do 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. It was, uh, true. it was interesting, and, you know, with a uh, lot of help and encouragement, and I was always – pretty much by the book and I learned I had a great trainer at my first job to teach me all about the anatomy the landmarks and functions of the jaw relationship so I just kept on like learning and reading about it and started taking courses we've heard that story a million times and you can tell by your passion (laughs) yeah I became obsessed with it yeah and wanted to learn more, and I just kept going, kept going, kept going. And uh, now I'm at uh, my current lab, which is very fun but stressful. You said it was like 20,000 feet? And yeah, 20,000 square foot building, place. and a lot of people get lost in there. Yeah. Like, we have reps that come in there, and they're like, wait, how do you get out of oh, here? Oh, I and know that feeling. <laughs> I've been so in those things. I've heard that, too. <laughs> And what are you doing there? Uh, Same remova- thing? Yeah, removables and the hybrids, a lot of locators, um, a lot of dentures. Oof. We have a lot of night guards. Yeah. So you do a little bit of everything that's yes. removable related. Exactly. No model work though, right? Um, yeah. I mean, if I need to get in there, I will definitely pour models. I'll definitely process. If you need it done right, she'll do it yeah. herself. <laughs> yeah. You know, articulate cases, anything you need to do, I mean, I'm on top of it. That's nice. Me. How big is the lab? How many technicians? Um, you know, I don't know exactly sh- for sure, but we have probably close to 50 oh, or 60 people. That's I, a good-sized lab. I had no idea. Yeah, and we have drivers, too, sure. that, you know, deliver and pick up oh, cases. Yeah. We have cus- customer service that help us with communicating to the offices and the doctors and HR. And so it's a full service, I'm Full assuming, service, right? yes. Crown and Bridge and CAD CAM, and we do milling and things wow. like that. I don't get to see a lot of the Crown and Bridge work or the milling or what they do over there because we're so big and I'm so busy <laughs> on my own side. Yeah. <laughs> So in your direct area, like removable related, how many are there other than you? Um, probably around twelve to thirteen. Oh, and we, that's huge! And we still we still need people. <laughs> Have you been able to find any? Uh, I mean, here and there, but you know, yeah. it's really hard to find somebody that has what it takes to be a dental technician and to have the experience we brought people on but you know you have to be a certain type of person to really crazy grasp (laughs) (laughs) for once i didn't say it elvis said it a little bit crazy yes yeah i I think we all are yeah wouldn't have it any other way no i wouldn't have it any other way so how much of your removable do you do digitally well i guess you could say models yeah. We do a lot of digital models. 
Edentulous models? Yes. Interesting. And then we duplicate them so we can work on the stone. That's what we do with our diagnostics. Yes, I mean, we have to yeah. because I think that the separator for it digital. Just doesn't work with wax. <laughs> yeah. Um, Why is somebody not working on that? I don't know, but I've heard that a, a lot. We're planning, I've heard this too. Thing. Yeah, we're planning to go digital with the dentures. We're just needing to get the time in and you know where's that yeah exactly <laughs> uh get your hands on the computer you know have you ever done one no but i yeah. have taken the the courses so yeah. you're open to it right of some course people are like eh, i don't really want to do digital i want to stay analog but you sound like you're pretty open to it yeah at first you know a lot of people i think are hesitant about the digital aspect of the field but if you want to grow as a yeah. technician you're gonna have to evolve with our industry I mean, evolve. Yeah, <laughs> that's a very important word. And you know how we love change, right? <laughs> you're not moving, you're dying, is that yes, the phrase? Yes, if you're not growing, you're dying. Growing, or if you're not moving. changing, you're dying yeah. or something like that. Something like that. <laughs> He's full of them today, folks. Hey, what can I say? He Got must have uh, taken his smart pill when he rolled out of bed <laughs> this morning. <laughs> So what are you doing here? So are you went to the lectures this morning? <laughs> yes, I did go to the lectures, and lunch was great. Yeah, it was. That's what we said, too. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Just was networking. Do you know a few people here from other labs? A few. Yeah. But I'm also on the ballot for oh. member at large for the D Lab. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's so awesome. I'm hoping I get voted for. And, oh, you know, you'll love it. Yeah. We've both sat on many boards, and the people that you meet, you think, you know, just in, like, these meetings, but uh -huh. the people that you work with on the boards, you become really tight with, and it's just, like, such a great experience. Yeah. I think I speak for both Elvis and Absolutely. I. So good luck. Thank you That's very, cool. very much. So what, it's were you exciting. just like, hey, guys, or how does that well, work? Well, I know a few of the people that are on the board, and I've communicated with them, and they thought I was a great candidate. So do you have to write up, like, a little bio about yourself and what you do and where you're from? And, like, how does that work? I've I, never been he, on a ballot, he, I don't think. Yeah, I didn't have to. I guess I just knew the person, and That's so cool. maybe I will. So let's. So uh, there's a physical ballot at this show yeah. that people, like, check mark. Uh, yeah, put in like a the box. good old days. Yeah. Are you out, you know, handing out money, <laughs> trying <laughs> no. to convince people, hey, I'm no, representing, I kissing have, babies? You have, where do you it. get the ballot? I think <laughs> I have Jason, uh, like, Motivating. Doing, yeah, motivating people for me and uh, just talking to people. I did see the piece of paper briefly, and I saw my name on it, but... You should take a picture of it. I should. Look, Mom. <laughs> I tell you, if I can get one, I'll vote. I don't know if I can. That's what I said. Where I do have we no get idea. Do you have to be in Texas? Do you have to be a lab owner? I don't know, but I'm willing to throw my vote in. Well, oh, let's do it. Even boy. five times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't care. So he has no shame. That's yeah, what we did for right. our podcast. Well, just keep voting. Just keep voting. Yeah. Keep voting. <laughs> yeah. You can do it. One, two, three, four. And we 18 did. 18 times. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about winning. How do you get the ballot? Do you even know that? Or does everybody that's a member? Well, somebody had it outside the... Yeah, the registration. The, yeah, yeah, registration booth. So I'm not sure if they're, like, handing them out or how that's working. Yeah, interesting. Elvis will find out. We will find that. out, and we're going to make you He's uh, of the president know. next year. Of the know. <laughs> yeah, we just talked to the uh, president right now. Richard Wills. Richard. Yes. Yeah. And super great guy. And he was saying, you know, it's been six years and I'm tired, but it's been a great six years. He said, what did you guys do after your boards? I said, I chilled for a whole year. Yeah. But you're going to love it. Like, it's just Well, you nonstop. had that year of Oh, God, the COVID, COVID, the COVID from hell year. Yeah. It's basically yeah. we... Uh, we didn't did get nothing. together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you did a great job at it, Barb. Yeah, thanks. You mastered the art of doing nothing. It was beautiful. Yeah, that was a <laughs> suck year. Oh, well. I will say that when I started getting on the boards, I was worried because I wasn't a lab owner. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm on the board with a lot of people that own the lab. I felt like I wouldn't fit in, but that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it was I think really all good. of us really vibe pretty well because we have such a... Like-minded. Yes, we're, right? yeah. yes, definitely. And I think that we're all passionate about what we do and what we believe in. Well, this association is super strong. Yeah, it That's really what we is. were talking about, too. Super I mean, rare. Like, I mean, there's a ton of people here. It's like 250 people here on a Friday. Yeah. And Elvis and I couldn't wait to get back here and get... 
get into it and talk to everybody. And I didn't it. know you were going to be here. I know. I was Last thinking I might decision. have to cancel, but <laughs> no, I'm like, I'm coming. So I got up at 4 a.m. and took a 6 a.m. flight, and I'm leaving tonight. So oh, I won't wow. be here tomorrow, okay. but at least I got today. So I'm That's super so awesome glad to you were you. able to make it. Yeah, yeah, I love this meeting. Yeah. This was our first live meeting was here, I think. That or f- no? Are you sure? Chicago. We started it all in Chicago. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I love it. So are you here <laughs> with anybody or are you here alone? Uh, here alone, yeah. No boss or coworkers no. or nada? No. You got some balls, girl. <laughs> Your lab's only about an hour away? Uh, no, it's actually like... Two um, hours away. Mm, probably 20, 30 minutes away. Oh, so it's in, the, it's in the Metroplex yeah. area. And all those people from the lab didn't show up. Interesting. We're, you need to encourage them. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I, I did. Understand. It's yeah. probably because we're so busy and oh, I, I put in my, um, you, you know. put in your I'll, dibs for the yes, day off. Yeah. Yes, give me the day off. But they could all come horses. tomorrow, right? They could. <laughs> oh, see ya. Elvis is yeah. going to step away. We say Elvis is going to leave the building. Yeah. He's got to work. Sorry, folks. He's working. So what's <laughs> next up for you? So do they give you the opportunity at that lab to, like, cross-train or to do oh, anything yeah. else? Oh, yeah. Cross-training is highly encouraged. Yeah, so we definitely that. try to train each other with anything that we can do, whether it's learning how to pour a model better or duplicating models, night guards, setting teeth, waxing, bending wire. I learned how to bend wire. I learned how to Ooh, do I would a like lot. That. That yeah. sounds cool. Yeah, I mean. Take those things just like. <laughs> Your fingers are really bad at first, <laughs> you know. But, yeah, cross-training is highly encouraged. And we all work so, so hard. I have a great, hard-working team at that lab. And my next step is to get my CDT. You're the second younger person that's told us that yeah today. i'm that's applying cool. in september good so i'm really excited been stockpiling ces for a couple of years now so at first i didn't know if you could do that i couldn't ever get the the right answer if you could stockpile hours because i knew i was going to try to do it before my five-year mark interesting did you ever get an answer I think you can, but at your five-year mark, you don't really need those. Okay. For the because then moving forward, yes. it's like twelve a year, I think, or some sort of every year that you have to update them. Yes, I'm always, you know, taking the initiative to do webinars, courses, learning about new things, learning more about implants, and They're it's so it's hard. a it, it's a big. There's so many. I know. There's so many to learn and learn more about like the functions in a denture because yeah you can set teeth all day long but it is it's it's harder than you think to actually have the balanced occlusion it's I mean people can say oh yeah I did that I did you know balance the occlusion but it's really not that easy if you're doing it the way that you're supposed to do it yeah I know and that's what you're going to get your CDT in, removables? Yes. Dentures? Yes, dentures. Well, I'm on this NBC board. So if you go to NBC.org or CERT, I think it's CERT, they have a list of any materials that you need, content, dates. You probably already know that, though. Yeah. Right? I'm like going to uh, do the, <laughs> the practice exam for the summer. Yep. You know, I've done a lot of reading, read the Air Force manual, done all the things that everybody tells you to do, but you still feel you know because you're applying intimidated for, yes oh, yeah. test anxiety oh yeah <laughs> you know that you can do they have remote testing now so you can do the test in your lab oh yeah i that that changed like two years ago yeah. that's so awesome i know because you're in your comfort zone mm-hmm. you're at your desk everything you know where everything is yes i you went don't to feel out of your element. oh i went to colorado springs base when i took mine and my oven came broken oh. showed up and i'm like what they were really cool, though. They had an oven just like mine. I was able to settle myself down, but yeah. if it's in your own space, oh, my God, I would love it. So, well, good luck to you on well, that. Thank you that's so That's really much. great. Thank like you. I said, I'm you're the, the second person that's told us that today, so that's really exciting. And enjoy yeah. the rest of your meeting. Well, thank you And enjoy you so your career, much. and I'm sure thank you'll you. see us next year. Yes, I will. Thanks for talking to us. Elvis had to step away, but I appreciate your time. Yeah, so. Bye-bye, Elvis. Bye-bye. <laughs> Again, the females take over the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Did you-
Did you know that most in-lab MCX5 users that have ordered burrs from Grow3x once keep on ordering Grow3x burrs over and over again? No way. You know what? I didn't know that. Why do you think that is, Elvis? Well, I think it's because Grow3x burrs are engineered by some of the same folks who have been providing burrs to some of the largest U.S. production labs for years. Did you also know that most roll-ins and DG Shape users have no idea what they are missing out on? Well, I think I can guess what they're missing out on. You are right. Most Roll-In and DG Shape users have absolutely no idea how good and great Grow3x burrs are because they think that the Grow3x burrs are only for the in-lab systems. Well, they are wrong. wrong. <laughs> to give Roll-In and DG Shape users the opportunity to find out for themselves how great the burrs are for their machines... Grow3x is now offering a buy three, get two first free special. This is exclusively for Voices from the Bench listeners, you guys, so please go support them. So all you simply have to do is go to the Grow3x website. That's grow3x.com. Click on burrs, then select Roland and DG Shape. Add five burrs of your choice to your cart. Click on checkout. Enter the discount code B3G2. That is B as in boy, the number three, G as in girl, the number two, burrs, and check out. That's awesome. You know what? We actually have a code, Elvis. Boom. That was easy, guys. Go for it. Free burrs. Use them and use them well. And we appreciate your support of the podcast, Grow3x. Thank you. A huge thanks to everyone who came and talked to us at the DLAT, especially those that sat down and recorded with us. We appreciate Kevin for coming on the podcast and talking about what and why Desktop Health is doing what they are doing. Sounds like some exciting new adventures for labs to check out. We appreciate all that Lance and the whole group is doing with Ortho and the ORG. We are definitely going to connect the NBC and the ORG to make sure everyone is providing the best possible education and certification. And we are extremely happy to announce, and I knew this was going to happen, that Sam is now a board member on the DLAT. It won't be long before we are talking to her at the meeting where she's going to be the president. So good job and congratulations, Sam. Awesome, everybody. Live from Washington State. Have a good one. Have a good one. (laughs) We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. I got my glasses on and I am ready to go.